there. Um, I thought today would be fun to just try to learn a little bit of basics on your color mixing. Um, I'm trying to get some more in-depth uh, interest and learning experience from mixing as many colors as I can and I'm uh, getting some very valuable information from a wonderful artist from Calgary and her name is Shirley and she is really helping me a lot so I just thought I would pass this on to you and just see if, you, if you're new to color mixing then you know that red and yellow and blue are your primary colors and white just to um, increase the values of those colors and then the secondary colors are what we're going to make from the red yellow and blue so I just wanted to show you a little bit about this today just for fun and hopefully you'll get something out of it um, I'm just using you can use any yellow red or blue I'm using what I have here as CAD yellow and ultramarine blue and I have CAD red so what I'm going to do is just show you. Now you can the secondary colors are, are the green, orange, and purple, but you can buy them in, in your own tubes or bottles. But you know, if you want to make your own, this is the fun way to do it. So just if you want to make a nice um, orange color, take yellow first. So take a blob of yellow and make a nice little round circle. And then you can take red and add that to your circle. Now you can mix that together on your palette before you do this. So I'm just going to show you this way for now. Let's take some more yellow just till you get and you just keep putting the two colors together until you get the color you want. So we just keep adding yellow, add yellow, yellow, yellow. And that brightens it up to a nice orangey color. And then what you can do is you can add some white to change the value of that color. So the value is, is going to make it a lighter. Just watch. So we got a nice yellow orangey color here. Now you can add more yellow, more red, and you can play with the red and yellow until you get the orange that you're looking for. So if you add a bit of white to that, and clean off your brush, just wipe it off in your tissue, grab a little bit of white, and we'll, high, we'll, we'll lighten up, say, the center of it. So this is your darker value, this is your medium value. See how that lightens up really nice? So that's a, a medium value. So you have three values. Set your medium value. And then your lightest value, then we'll add more white. Let's take the white and put it on this edge here so that we'll put the three of them together. We'll have three values. There we go. So we'll lighten that up again even more by adding more white. So you keep adding the white until you get the lighter value. And all this paint is wet. We're working wet on wet, wet to blend the colors. See now you got three values of your orange. See that? There we go. So I'm gonna see the, how they're separated. What I'm gonna do now is I am going to clean my brush off and I'm going to have hardly any paint on it. I'm just wiping it off in a piece of tissue. And then I'm just going to take that and I'm going to blend that in here on this side and blend that here. And now you have a really nice, it can be whatever you want it to be. It could be an orange. <laughs> but that's just to show you the three values of orange. And we got orange, uh, we got orange color from our primary color, red and yellow. So isn't that fun? So you can take that red and yellow and play with it as much as you want and get different color reds and yellows and turn them into oranges, add white. So the next color I think you might like is, let's try green. So for green, we'll take yellow and blue. So let's take some blue first. Blue is a pretty strong color. So if you take blue, if you take 
yellow first. That will hit that that'll let help you get a lighter version. But let's just try this blue. We'll try it the other way too. So let's go with blue and some yellow. And there we go. Look at that beautiful green coming out. Look at that. Now, that beautiful, nice dark green. Beautiful. So now that beautiful dark green. We can also lighten that up with more yellow. So it depends on the color green that you want. So say you want that dark color, but you want to have some different values if you're doing a tree or, you know, bushes. So you want to lighten that up. So let's take some white and add that to the middle. Oh, look how pretty that's coming out. So that's your middle value. And then take, I'm just cleaning my brush between um, putting on the different uh, whites because I want it to get brighter and brighter. So then on the end here, we will add more white. And then you got three values. Look at that. I'll lighten it up even more. All right. There we go. See? And then you can go lighter and lighter again. I just want to show you the three values. So I'm going to clean my brush off and I'm just going to blend the edges in. There we go. So there's your green with three values. Do you think I should lighten up that little corner a little bit more? See, the more you lighten it up, it looks so much prettier because it, it makes the dark colors pop. All right, so here we go. Now I got three values of green made from yellow and blue. Now what's next? Let's try uh, maybe a purple color. Okay, so purple from the primary colors is from red and blue. So let's take some, you can either do red or blue first. Let's try the blue. You try different ways and that way you'll be able to see what works for you. So, let's take some red, and let's take some blue. Oh, and we get a really pretty purple. Look at that. Nice. Yes, beautiful purple color. Now, if you want your purple color nice and dark like that, that's great. That will be your underpainting. And then you can get your three values again. So just I'm only making it round because when you add your values, it makes it even more round looking. So let's take that deep purple, pretty, and we can add our white again to change the value. So take some white and add it in the middle, just a little bit of white, and add it in the middle. And oh, look at that, very nice. So there's your middle value, and then we got a really nice light edge here for your light values. Just need to add more white as it's coming along. That's okay. So we just add more white, and we get as white as we want it. So we have three different values of your purple. Here we go. See, that will lighten up if you add more white. Keep going until you get what you're looking for. There we go. Nice. Okay, we'll just say that's the three values. So that's your dark and medium and light. And I'm going to clean my brush again. And I'm just going to blend that corner in there. Blend that together there. And blend that there. And we have some really nice values of the purple. Just add a little bit more white on the edge here so you can see the difference. There we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. Like I say, you know, you just can't just throw it on your canvas and, and say, okay, well, that's going to work. Sometimes you got to go in and in and in and keep trying until you get what you're looking for. There we go. We're getting it. And then I'm just going to blend that so that we have our different values. Okay. Now, so there's our three different values of purple. And that's made from red and blue. 
on the color wheel. And we use the white to get the different values. So now, one more, and then I'm going to let you go so that you can practice that and have some fun with it. One more is you can take all three colors. So you can take your red, and you can take your yellow, say equal amounts. Take red, yellow, and blue. Let's see what happens there. This, these three colors you can also use for um, to use instead of black if you want to for dark on your paintings. See how nice that is? Look at that. Really dark, dark, deep color. Add more red and it goes to a reddish dark color. Add some blue. Oh yeah, that looks so nice. It's so dark. This is these this color is beautiful for dark underpaintings. And some yellow. And then if you want to see the mixed all up good. That's a nice dark color from those three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, made that beautiful dark color. It's a brownish color. And then if you add white to the center so we get some values and see what it looks like. Oh, nice brown. See how nice that is? That's a nice brown color. Now that, that value is the other is the middle value of that brown color. And then we add more white to the edge and we will have the other value, the lighter value. So now as soon as I can get enough white in there that will show you the, the lighter value. Because I'm working wet on wet of course the paint is all going to blend together. If you wait for it to dry, then you're going to only cover up what's underneath your painting. You just cover it all up. So this is, I like working when I'm wet. So we'll just get our lighter color on the edge so that we can have our three values. Now there's your three values. I made a brown color from red, yellow, and blue. And the primary colors and I made nice brown from all three colors and I added white to get the three different values of that brown and I'm just going to blend in that edge and I'm going don't forget to wipe your brush and I'm going to blend in that edge and now we have an amazing three values. So you only have a light green. I just want to show you some different ways you can make some different greens. Just take some green paint and put it on your canvas. Now when you do that, when you put that green on there, if it's not dark enough and you want a more earthy color, I'll make it big enough so you can see it. Now you will be working wet on wet, okay? in order to mix. When you want to blend colors together you have to work wet paint on wet paint. So if you add black to that green you will get a really dark green. But it's kind of a muddy looking green so you can always add more green to it until you get a nice dark green. So there's a nice dark green there just by adding black. See how it changed it? Now what about if you want to add something else? So say you have your green, start off with your light green, and you add blue. See what that will do. So blue, change it to a nice bluish greenish color, which is nice for your oceans, your forests. So adding blue looks really nice. That darkens up your green. You can use that for shadows. Now let's see what else. How about we take green and we add red. See what happens. Okay, so you take some red and add red to it. And that changes the color to a nice reddish, reddish brown. Because green and 
green and red makes a nice brown. But you get a greenish brownish color, which is nice too. If you add a little bit of white to it, you'll be able to see what you're doing. You can see it's nice. You can you can change the values with a bit of white. Change the values. There's too much white. It's probably too much white, so you can just go back here and see. You change the values. So see how the red and the green makes a brown color? Let's see what else we have here. Let's see. Brown. Put brown on your palette, on your canvas. I'm just using some Bristol paper right now. And if you add a bit of red to that brown, you get a nice reddish brown. It's a nice color. There we go. So you can take your colors and you can add either the complementary colors. So the complementary color of red is green. And uh, that's what we did here. So we tone it down with the complementary color, the opposite color on the wheel. So now we, uh, we all know that blue, so let's add blue. Let's add some yellow to our blue. And of course, that turns into another green. And you can change the colors by adding more yellow or more blue. It's almost the same color up there. And you can add a bit of white to change the value. Let's see what other colors we are. How about brown and yellow? Let's see what that looks like. Brown and some yellow. There we go. That's a nice color. So it just changes the colors. If it's too dark, you can add the yellow to make it lighter, or a nice tan color, a nice uh, beach color. So all those nice colors. You can have black. Black. And you can add yellow to your black, and it will turn green. Isn't that amazing? Nice dark green just by adding yellow. You might need more yellow than black. I'm not sure. Let's see. You can keep adding yellow to your... Look, there we go. Nice green. Let's see all the greens you can make. Really nice. See all these nice colors you're getting. What other colors would be nice? What's blue? We added blue and green. Let's try blue and brown. Blue. Brown. That changes to a nice dark grayish color. Blue or brown gives it kind of a gray, dark or medium, or let's add some white and see what color gray it is. Oh yeah, that's a nice gray. See? Nice. So you can do a lot of things with your colors. You can make your own colors from just from the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue. And you can get all the colors that you want and you can change the values by using white or black if you wanted to add black to some, say this one here to darken it up. But see the thing is that one is uh, dry. You need it to do it wet on wet to get the change. You just add some more green. So depending on what colors you're looking for in your paintings. You know, if you want to do a glaze, you can take some blue watery paint. You add water to your, to your, put water in a little bowl and add some blue paint to it until it's see-through. And then you can probably glaze, like if you glaze over this, you can still see what's underneath, but it darkens it up for you. 
but you can still see what's underneath. See? Just shades down a little bit by glazing. You glaze. Yeah, and you can glaze just watery blue paint or watery red paint or as long as you can see through it, then you can see what's underneath what you already had done. That changes the green, tones it down again. So those are some colors that you can play around with. If you just want to use red and you want to get a nice orangey color, you can add yellow. I find sometimes I get almost pinkish color and I don't like that. But if you add enough yellow, you'll, you'll get your orange. There we go. See? It's pretty. You can even add a little bit of white to it. Brighten up even more. Oh, there you are. Lost you. Okay. Good. Do that again. So we got some red. And then we got some yellow. And it's more yellow than it is red, so you won't get that pinkish color. More yellow than red. And there we go, the really nice, bright, beautiful orange. There we go, that's better. Didn't want to lose you. So, that's a few little tips on your colors and what you can mix together to get some nice colors. And uh, so you take your colors and mix them together. You can even mix probably two or three colors together to see what that does. Probably you could mix uh, brown, brown, and blue. So say you mix all your dark colors. Brown and blue and red. And that will give you a really nice dark color. Dark purplish color. You add a bit of white to see what it looks like. Nice purple. You can even take red and your blue and add some yellow. You get another nice color. So just mix up your colors and see what colors you can get from from the ones that you mix together. It gives you a nice pink color. Lots of ways to mix your colors and get all kinds of different shades and blends. Make sure that paints are wet. Wet on wet. They're pretty colors. See how pretty they are just by mixing some colors and that way you don't get a straight green if if a painting asks for for a um, hunter green and you're, you only have a light green. Just add some uh, blue to your green to bring the tone down. And uh, you know, if uh, if you, the colors are asking for certain colors you don't have, like like if you they ask for yellow ochre, yellow ochre, ochre, ochre. You can have yellow, your bright yellow. Right now, I got to mix. So your bright yellow, and then you can add some brown to it, and that'll give you that yellow ochre look. There we go, see? And that tones it down to a yellow ochre instead of a bright yellow that you have there. Do it again. I'll do it again. So I got my plastic wrap, and I'm just dipping into a bit of red and a bit of blue, maybe a bit of green, and I'm just tapping, see what comes out, and look. It's just like you can make a beautiful abstract painting without having to do much at all, only tap, tap, tap. See? Isn't that cool? Now, what else do we got here that we can show you? Might be a little interesting. So maybe we could do some paint. 
we'll put some wet paint on our palette. So we'll just put some blue or purple, doesn't matter. So we'll just put some paint on there. And then you can, a lot of these techniques are good for abstracts, I think. So um, you can take a bit of tissue and you can take your bit of tissue and uh, while that's still wet, you just take a bit of tissue and then tap it into that and, the, and you can take out you can take out some paint so you can lift it out lift it out while it's wet okay there we go and that gives you a nice little technique lifting out perfect what else can I show you how about the palette knife the palette knife is great for all kinds of things if you wanted to make different colors like I said a lot of this is a, a great for abstract painting so I may you know you you may be able to put a nice abstract painting using these techniques. So I'm just using a little palette knife and make sure you can see this. You can just take your knife and just rub across using the bottom of your knife so you can get all the, the colors on there. So I just fill it up with colors, different colors and pull it through and look at all those pretty colors you get. See? Abstract paintings. Yes. And now we have another one where you can dry brushing. I do a lot of dry brushing in my paintings and dry brushing is, is good, it's fun. It's, um, all you got to do is put some paint. I'm going to go with this up here, this brown piece up here. See if you can see it there. Now I'm going to make sure that I keep an eye on my camera because I'm trying to keep it close enough so you can see it. And I don't want to forget to move it. So, so I got some brown paint on my brush and maybe some white. Brown and white. And I'm going to wipe it off. I'm just going to wipe it off. So that just not a big lot left on my brush. And then I'm going to dry brush this over there. And that will leave that will leave some streaks, which makes it look like maybe you got some um, nice rough brush stroke. And that like if you're doing like a a cabin or a house and you want it to look like old shingles on there or old clapboard that works for that and then you can just go across look I'm not I'm barely touching the canvas okay that's just dry brushing good some of these you may like and some you may not like you know you may like some different types of paintings and I, I think a lot of this is great for like I say abstract especially this one here so that was just plastic wrap. Something else I wanted to show you was uh, what I call is um, glazing. So what you can do is get, what I did was I took some paint, I took blue, and I put it in this little jug and I added water to it. I don't want to spill it. So what I'm doing is it's really watery. See? really watery but you can still see you can see through it it's a transparent I add water to my paint and then I and it's nice and watery so what I use that for or what you can use that for is you can go over say if um, you got blue say you got a blue sky right here and you're finished painting it and now the paint's all dry now you're gonna say oh gosh I gotta go over that now if I go over it with the opaque paint then what's going to happen is I'm going to cover up everything I did. I like what I have. I just want to just want to add some more blue to it. So you can take this blue paint. It's hard to see it there now, but if that blue was lighter, the uh, the paint. If that sky was lighter, you'd be able to see how it tints it even darker. It gives it a tint. And also, if you want to change the green, say that green, you want to change. You want to give it a a darker green or you want to change it a little bit 
change the tone of the paint. Let's try the red, see what happens. I'm just using blue, but you can use any colors. That didn't change it too much, but it is a glaze. Yep. What about this one? I probably don't have enough paint in my... Let me try and add a little bit more paint. Let's see. All right. So if you don't think it's... But you still need to see through it. So don't make it so thick that you cover up everything underneath what you did, okay? So I'll just add a bit more blue and see will that help. Make sure it's nice and watery. Make sure it's nice and watery and see through. Let's see, let's see. Oh yeah, there we go, that's better. I just needed to add a bit more paint to my water. And that dark, see how dark is the red really nice, but yet you still have what you did underneath. See that? Good. Let's try it on the green. Like I said, you can try different glazes. To see what the techniques are. Okay. If I forget to move the camera, I'll make sure you get to see it a second time anyway. So here we go. So I'm going to darken this one up a little bit. So you can put as many glazes on as you want. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Put a glaze on here. There we go. See how it darkens it up a nice bit? Even darkens up your purple. Let's see how we do with the green. So this isn't these are glazes and like I said you can change the color or you can uh, darken the color without destroying it. So glazing is kind of nice too. Look you can even put it on, a, especially if you put it on over white it's going to change the color a little bit to the blue. So, so there. Now, what else can I show you that could benefit you? If you have any requests to show uh, anything, just let me know. Because there's so much to learn in painting. I, You know, you can learn a lot in painting. Another one that you might be interested in is scraping out. Now it's good for oil paint. I don't know if it's any good for... Let's try... Um, let's try... Say we're trying to put some grass in. Let's just put in... Just scrub that out. We won't tap, tap, tap. We just scrub, scrub, scrub. There we go. And we can take our palette knife or the end of your brush and pull out some grass or some trees. Let's see if I can get you closer so you can see what I'm doing. Now hopefully that will clear up a bit. There we go. So I put on wet paint. The paint has to be wet and the canvas underneath has to come through. So if you want to make, like if you made a tree, if you made a tree, I'll just put a tree there. So you made a tree and what you wanted to do will sh look like you have some nice branches coming off your tree. So you can pull it out with the back of this with a toothpick with your palette knife. So I think that's all the tips I have for you right now. And uh, if that was a bit of a help, I hope it was. And if you want me to show you anything else that you can think of, I'll be glad to show you how to use. I believe I have uh, some videos up on how to use a fan brush or how to use uh, a liner brush. I could probably do another video for you on that anyway. So any, anyway, that's it for now. Um, you got any questions, just let me know. Just leave a, a comment in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.